I'm sure he is. I'm not sure about his technology. That's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay. Um, our website is basically um, the biggest discussion forum in Ireland. So we, um, I invite questions from the public for you. Okay. So it's not just me. Okay. Uh, so I'm sitting here with Tim Robbins, uh, Oscar winning movie star Tim Robbins, as the press release in front of me says. Um, so it's pointing that way. So the screen is there. Right, hi. So I'm waving hi. Yeah, you're waving hi. He's waving hi. <laughs> Colourfully dressed today as well. Who is in Ireland for Arthur's Day and for his gig in Wheelands on the 26th. Are you looking forward to your gig, Tim? Yes, in Ireland. Much, yeah. uh, I've up been in Belfast. All over up in Belfast. I've been listening to your album for about the last two weeks. I got it from really? Bernie and Pius. It's very, very good. I'm a very big fan of Queen and Dreams and Crush on You in oh, particular. Thank you. Because they're lovely, gentle songs. And the first question that I want to ask you is actually about the album. Um, I've read a lot of the recent press about it. And you're being described, or the Rogues Gallery is being described as a folk band. And is that something you have a problem with? No. No, I know your father was in a folk band called The Highwaymen, but do you think it is folk music that you are performing and that you've been trying to, that you're trying to uh, express yourself through? Folk is not a negative to me. I, I, I think I'm honoured to be part of a, a, a band that is considered to have folk roots. Uh, you know, we can... There's a couple of rock and roll songs we do, but you know we're telling stories. That's the that's the, uh, the what I'm interested in doing at this point. Um, I've had a rock and roll band in the past, and uh, it's fun. But uh, we're, I'm more I'm more interested in telling intimate stories and having that kind of communion with the audience. I read a very interesting interview you did with the Irish Times. It was published on Saturday by a lovely journalist called Sinead Gleeson, where you were commenting how the media seems to be focusing on the fact that this album is some sort of midlife crisis, but it's not for you at no, all. Not at all. No, this is you telling different stories about different events in your life. I made a joke on Desert yeah. Island Disc, and they, uh, <clears throat> in their desperation to, to write, to understand my personal life, they... Uh, made some stuff up. And your personal life has been a lot in the media over the last, I mean, since you were, since 1993 with the Oscars thing. Is that, has that been a big problem for you? Or are you are you an intensely private person? Or do you just get on with it? I just don't think it's anyone's business. I mean, it, the way I look at it is if I was on a bus mm -hmm. and some guy came up to me that I don't know and said, so how's your wife? I'd probably hit him. Okay. <laughs> You know what I mean? So uh, just look at it from that perspective and then imagine what it's like uh, multiplied. And you pretty, uh, I pretty, uh, as soon as that started to happen to me, way back when, I, I had an adverse reaction to it. Okay. I, I don't, I don't, um, I think, I think it's, uh, Intimacy has to be very personal, and when intimacy becomes projected on a large screen and your private life becomes something that's public and you start inviting photographers in to see your living room and your, and your kids and your dogs and your um, personal collectibles, mm -hmm. it just seems sordid to me, and um, I'm just... I, I'm, I, I have. I just don't want. I have never been interested in doing that. Okay. Um, I'm. I'm more than interested in ripping open my heart and showing it to you on stage. On stage, and that's what you're going to do in the gigs. <laughs> uh, I've got a lot of questions for you from Twitter and Boards.ie, but I suppose one of the stupidest question I've got. I'm going to get out of the way. How did you get the poster straight back on the wall of um, How did you Raquel get the poster? Welch? In Shawshank. How did you get it, what? You know when Dufresne goes through the wall and yeah. it comes in and the poster is back straight on the wall ah, in yeah. that scene? I've got loads of questions for you it's asking how to go that. through. I know. <laughs> it's a weird one. <laughs> Here, um, Do they think I dove through the poster into the hall? I, I don't know. Oh, no. I don't know. Right. 
Um, ma- just say the magic of movies. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> Since he's often singled out as one of Hollywood's liberals, does he ever get frustrated with the political scene in Hollywood? And were you proud when you were mocked in Team America? The only thing I regret about Team America, and I told this to the filmmakers, is that they didn't send me my burned, charred puppet. I would, <laughs> I would have really appreciated having that little keepsake from the movie. Right. Uh, and then politics in America. You're, I mean, you're, you're outspoken enough. Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm going to say no comment on that right now because I'm. I'm deeply frustrated with the propaganda that's going on. Okay. If you didn't work in the arts, what would you like to work as? And uh, A teacher of some kind. And do you prefer the role of actor or director? Um, acting's a lot easier. I love directing, though. It's, okay. It's, 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 a, um, it's a, such a uh, creative and exciting thing to do. You're obviously in a position where you can kind of pick and choose your roles. Is that why you would go for the fun cameos and things like Anchorman? Oh yeah. Well, I wanted. I I I love doing comedies. Okay. And the thing is that what, sometimes when you do serious roles really well, people then think you can't do comedy, or yep. that, that you don't want to do comedy, mm-hmm. or that maybe they don't see you doing comedy. Okay. And the funny thing is when you do comedy really well. They don't think you can do the serious, so it's uh, right now. I'd love to do a comedy. And would that tie into why you why you were quoted as saying that you didn't want to trade on your fame as working in the movies before releasing your music? Mm. Okay. I, well, that that has to do with when when you first become famous. Um, you know, there's all these temptations. That, you know, you can do anything. You know, mm-hmm. you can go to any restaurant, any club. Hang out with anybody. Your life can be very superficial very quickly. Okay. And I was very lucky to have an acting company with the Actors Gang that kept me grounded. And so when everyone else was going off and hanging out at the various clubs, I was working on a German expressionist play with the Actors Gang. You know? Right. So, <laughs> so I. Uh, uh, same thing with music. There. You know, you're famous, so why not do an album? And uh, coming from a family of musicians, I mm-hmm. took music more serious than that, and I felt you really had to have something to say if you're going to do an album. And um, otherwise, it could just be looked at as an ego trip, you know. And so I waited till I had something to say, a full album of something to say. Um. Have you, <laughs> God, I know. have you ever been to say what's an AO? No, I never have. Really? No, okay, I never there have. we go. Um, did you get to improv much in High Fidelity playing Ian Ray Raymond and what were John Cusack and Jack Black like to work with? Um, I, I don't recall improvising a lot. It was a good script. Okay. Uh, and I've worked with John and, and Jack many times. Um, first time I worked with both of them was with the Actors Gang. Okay. Uh, no, actually, the first time I worked with John was in Sure Thing, and then he did an Actors Gang show after that. Okay. And Jack Black started at the Actors Gang when he was 12 years old. Okay. Um, I've been asked to ask, what's your secret to looking so good? Do you have a picture in the attic? A pic- what does that mean, a picture in the attic? So Oscar Wilde wrote a story called the... Um, Called, oh my God, The Secret of Dorian Gray. Uh, Dorian and Gray, Dorian Gray yeah. have uh, a picture okay. in the attic. Oh, right, right, so they're right, wondering right. if you have that. Uh, no, it's uh, it's um, healthy living. Okay. The stage production of 80, 1984 was huge. Do you ever see yourself bringing it to the big screen? Um, no. Uh, it's, the rights aren't available. Okay. Do you think that rock, folk music will return to being the people's protest music? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I think it already is, uh, in some so, some forms. Writing that kind of socially minded music is difficult. It can very easily be didactic and uh, um, overwrought, and 
I'm much more interested in, in right now, at this time of my life, I'm much more interested in telling stories about individuals okay. that reflect on the larger whole, rather than trying to write about the larger picture. Um, are you a comic book fan? Says somebody who knows about your Green Lantern appearance. I am. I was a big Flash uh, guy. Okay. Flash was my hero. And I'm getting rushed, so the final question I have for you, what is in your iPod or what music are you listening to at the moment? What, what There's a new Arcade your... Fire album, which is absolutely great. Okay. And okay. Like, they need help selling their record. <laughs> <laughs> it's this. <laughs> it's that. Oh, don't worry. So, uh, Tim, thank you very, very much for your time. Enjoy your gig tonight. Enjoy your gigs in, in, on the 26th and in Belfast. Enjoy the tour. Thank you. There's a lot of you on it, and there's a lot of great names in that band. And thank you very, very much for talking to us. My pleasure. Thank All you. Right. Cheers. Thank Thanks, man. Sorry about that. No, it's fine.